You may have seen my first video, Seek and Destroy, but now I've made Seek and Destroy 2. After using the first one a bit, I've decided that it needed some improvements. The problem with the first code was that sometimes they would spin and they wouldn't find the other robot. So this time I've made it so they move around the board occasionally and then spin, and then move around the board and then spin. I even had some code at the end of this video for some crazy weapons, or some cool weapons. This one's a bit silly, but it's awesome. <laughs> This is the slideshow that I show kids. So I'm just going to run you through step by step how to code it and you could code it on your device while you're watching this if you like and you'll see it's a bit different to the last video. I say to the kids with every vehicle that we make we always start with movement. Um, from the bottom there it says set movement motors, we're going to set the movement motors. In other words we're going to tell the hub where to plug in the motors and I uh, always plug my motors into C and D and then I don't have to think about it too much. So when you build your robot you need to plug your motors into ports C and D on the hub. Okay and then you're going to set the movement speed. Uh, I set it to about 50% and then I grab the block that says start moving right and I make it a right turn of 100% so it's a sharp turn so both wheels go in opposite directions so the actual robot will spin and then I go to the control tab on the left and I choose the block that says wait for one second but we're actually going to wait for two seconds so change the one to a two and that first stack there that just says that the movement motors are set shows you the speed of how fast it's going to spin and then it starts spinning for two seconds. The set movement speed of 50 can be increased um, but I like it to go pretty fast because then uh, they're not sensing the other robot while they're spinning. The thing about the ultrasonic sensor is that the robot needs to move fairly slowly for it to work. Uh, an ultrasonic sensor emits a sound, doesn't it? So a, a, a really high-pitched sound that you can't even hear goes out of one of those eyes, and then it comes back in to the other one, because it bounces off whatever it's, the sound's shooting off. And it's so clever because it works out how far away it is from something just by how quickly that sound comes back to the sensor. Okay, now we're going to grab this block in the control section that says forever because we're going to make something loop. And we are just going to make the vehicle go to the white line and go backwards and turn. And we're just going to do that over and over again. So let's go to the movements again. Always use the pink blocks when you want to control the wheels that are moving the robot. We're going to set the movement speed again because we might want this to be different. So we're going to set the speed and for this case, I'm just going to leave it at 50, but often with these sorts of battles, with Spike Prime on the sumo wrestling boards, the battle bots can go too fast, so I suggest a slower speed. Or well, 50 is pretty good, but you won't want to make it even slower later. Then we're going to say start moving, and after we start moving, we're going to go back to the control tab and we're going to grab the block that says if then. Not if then else, just if then. And we're going to pop that in there, and in that hexagon we're going to put something from the census tab. So let's go to the blue census tab, and we're going to grab the block that says A reflection less than 50%. Grab that one, it's a hexagon up there on the left, the third one down. And we're going to plug the light sensor into B. So change the A to a B, um, and then when you build it, you have to plug it into port B, don't you? There's a less than equals greater than sign there. We need to make that a greater than sign. If you've got a white line around the edge of your board or white tape, you need to make it a greater than sign because what we're going to say is when the light is greater than a certain amount, we want it to go backwards. When it's reflecting off the black, if the black's the interior of your circle, it won't be reflecting much light. But when it's reflecting off the white surface, it should reflect more light. So we need to make that a greater than sign. Uh, not a less than sign, it needs to be a greater than sign if, you are, if you've got a white ring around your board or white tape around your area. And then you're going to change this 50. I reckon a number like 20 is pretty safe. It depends on how you build your robot and how far the sensor is off the ground, that sort of thing. Um, you might need to experiment with that number. Um, you might need to hover your vehicle above the black and above the white and get a reading on your iPad to see how much um, light is being reflected and then you sort of pick a number in the middle of that so when it's greater than sort of halfway we're going to get it to go backwards.
a really important step that kids often forget to do is after they connect to their robot, you need to make sure that the sensor is not just seeing colors, but seeing reflected light. So connect your robot like you normally would, and then click on the same connection tab up the top of the green tick, and you'll see that your color sensor is on the screen now on the top right. You need to change that from color to reflected light. If you don't do that, then the reflected light block won't work. So let's go back to the movement section. And if we want it to move backwards, we're just going to grab this. We're going to set the speed again because going backwards, you can actually go a bit faster. So you could change the speed on that to something like 80% if you really wanted to. Then see the top block and the pink ones? We're going to grab that one and we're going to put that inside there as well. But this is where we're going to get to go backwards. So you can see the arrow. We're going to change this arrow so it faces down and now it will face the opposite way. But we don't want it to go backwards for 10 rotations. That's too many. We're going to go back for, back for just one rotation. And you might want to change this later. If you've got small wheels, you might want to make two rotations. Uh, one or two rotations is good. Okay, and then we're going to set the speed again for how fast it's going to scan for the robot. So set movement speed and we'll make this pretty slow. Make it like 25% so the robot's spinning slowly. And then we're going to get the one that says spin. So it's going to do a right 30 or left 30 turn of 100. You can choose right or left, it doesn't matter. Right 100 or left negative 100. And we're just going to make that scan for two rotations of the wheels. And that means the robot will start spinning. Only for two rotations though. Okay. So in my last video, I found that the robots were spinning too much. Eventually, they might not even see each other. So I've made it just spin a little bit in case it might see the other one. And if it doesn't, then it's going to go back up to the top of the forever, underneath the forever, and, and it's going to start moving forwards again until it sees the white line. So the cool thing about this is that it'll start spinning at the start for two seconds, and then it will go towards the white line, and then it will if you see the white line, and then go backwards just a little bit, and then it will slow down and start scanning for the opposition. And if it doesn't find anything in two rotations, then it will go back up to where it says forever and start going forward again. And it will just keep doing that over and over and over again. But it hasn't seen the other robot yet. Now, in my last video, I made it so that um, the distance sensor was all part of this stack but I've decided that it actually works better if you make a whole new stack just for the distance sensor. Let's go over to the events tab and we're going to grab the block it's the fourth one down and it says A when closer than 8. Grab that one over there put it there. Now we can leave it as A because we haven't used A yet as in port A so when we build it we're going to plug this sensor into port A and then instead of eight, we're going to make it about 30 centimeters. So change this percent to centimeters. And that's about a foot. That's a, a 30 centimeters will detect a robot fairly close to it, but not too, too far away. And then we are just going to say underneath that, we're just going to say start moving. So let's go to the movement section and choose start moving and pop that block in there. Now, when you press play down the bottom right of the screen and you've connected and everything, it's going to run both stacks at once. So it's going to go to the white line, go backwards and turn and start rotating. But if, if A detects that other robot at any stage, it's going to start moving straight ahead. Okay. And that works. I'll show you a demo here. The other thing you can do is with this right hand section stack, when the sensor is activated, you could have some sort of weapon on your robot that does something when it sees the other robot. So you could grab 
another motor, like from the blue menu for motors. And you could make a motor run, like spin five times, for example. So you have some sort of propeller or wheel or something on there that's gonna mess with the other robot. Every time it sees the other robot, this could make it activate the robot's weapon. But we can't use port A, we have to use E or F. So change it to E and make it spin five times. But you could do something fancier than that. You could actually grab a repeat block and then put the motor spinning like half a rotation one way and then half a rotation the other way and repeat that five times. So you'll get some sort of weapon that goes back and forth or up and down. And that's often a cool thing to have on your robot. When you're building a your robot, if you've got a weapon, you could add either the blue box from either stack there. You don't do both, obviously. You do one or the other. So you grab... You make a very simple one at the top that just spins around, or you can make a weapon that goes back and forth. I'll leave this on the screen so that kids can work out what things they can change safely without mucking things up. And the main things I want to change are how fast it spins at the start, and how fast it goes forwards towards the white line, how far it goes backwards when it sees the white line, and how fast it scans so it can see the other robot. I reckon a slow speed's good there because the ultrasonic sensor won't work if it's spinning too fast. And on the right hand stack, they can change any of those numbers in the blue blocks they like. So I'll leave this on the screen so kids know where to plug things in. I try to encourage them to look at their code to work out where to plug things in, but I often make it easier by it. They often come up to me and say, where do I plug these things in? I say, look at the TV. You can see on the TV that you plug the sensor into A or B. I've just added memberships to my channel so you can become a Robot Man fan. And here's a shout out to my first two members. Also, if you haven't seen my lessons that I've got in my merch store, check them out. I've got 10 lessons for teachers.